All right, lads, welcome back to me podcast, Cheaper Than Therapy. Mick Thomas here, the first podcast of 2020. Happy New Year to everybody. Happy, happy and healthy 2020. How was it? Are you sticking to your New Year's resolutions or are they already just out the fucking window with your Christmas trees? Huh? Are, the, are, are, you, are you still at the gym? Are you listening to this at the gym? I hope you are. That would be nice if you're on a treadmill, an elliptical, right? Maybe jogging outside in the woods. Maybe you're hiking, listening to Cheaper Than Therapy. That would be fantastic. That would be a great achievement. I'd like that to happen, right? Everyone's out, the new healthy, new you. Or are you just still on the couch? Just didn't happen, right? Like, yeah, I'll do it Monday. I'll do it Mondays. Every other Monday. But whatever, like, are you like a gym, a gym owner now, just casting a net out and just raking all the money in? Do you know gyms, this is a a statistic, that gyms do 68% of their whole sales in the first three weeks of the new year? Isn't that fantastic? I mean, I just made it up, but it could be true, right? It could be true. It could be believable. It sounds like it would be true. I went back to the gym uh, with my um, my cracked ribs starting to heal, and I'm like, you know what? I'm 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 fucking done. I'm done worrying about what I look like now. I really am. I'm just gonna go out there to share and just be healthy. I'm gonna eat clean, and I'm gonna go to the gym and just just have a good time and stop spending an hour and a half in there. Like for what? Who who am I impressing? Right? Just let me go be healthy and not be a fat fuck. That's all I'm gonna do this year. I'm done spending an hour and a half to two hours in the gym analyzing different workout programs and ah, I'm done with it. I'm done wasting my time. I just want to go there, nice little run the treadmill or, 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 or go up on the, uh, the Stairmaster there, keep the old McThomas arse nice and tight. And I'm just going gonna, just gonna to go back down and um, lift some weights and, and, and that's it. Just going to stay healthy. That's my goal. But I hope your new year was fantastic, right? I, I had a great new year. I was sick as a dog New Year's. Sick as a dog. Coming out both ends, literally. Just, I went out for my son's birthday. Uh, well, you know, my son was there too. <laughs> Just got like, all right, happy birthday. Dad's going to get pissed. Uh, I went, I, I went um, we went to the Cheesecake Factory and, and, and he's, it's one of his favorite places. And I got a factory burrito. You gotta Google that. It's a ma- it's about a foot long of a massive burrito, and uh, the, you, you know. The, so I go in there and, and it's like I eat and I come home and it's like I'm not feeling good. I and I go right to the bathroom about ten o'clock at night, and just heave it up, heave it up. Coming, at, I was jumping from sitting to the toilet to turning back around and puking again. At one time, I contemplated where the the tub was to the toilet that I, I wonder if i could just sit on the toilet and lean forward and puke at the same time and get both targets the tub and the toilet that was my goal but i didn't so then the next night then right uh, the next night was new year's eve and i was in port jeff port jefferson long island two sold out shows and i am backstage that there's two comics, right, and some theater people who can vouch for this. I had my literally my head down, and I was drink, drinking ginger ale, and I had my head down. And I was all in a suit, everything all done up, and all of a sudden, Mr. Thomas, you're on in five, and I go ah, fuck. and I get up and I go out, and I don't know. I guess the professional that I am, I uh, I had a gr- two great shows. So I want to thank everybody who came out to those two sold out shows. It means a lot to me that you showed up like that. That was that was such a great night, and you guys made it a great night. So thanks so much. Um, yeah. So 2020, right? It's a that's a got some stuff going on. It's fuck is it right? Peace on earth. That's what we wanted at Christmas. Peace on earth. We couldn't make it. We couldn't make it two weeks, right? A lot of shit happening in the world now. I'm not political, but woof. A lot of a lot of people a lot of people worried about going to war. Right? 
I don't I don't know the full stories of it, but all I know is like apparently didn't they kill like they didn't they kill a bad guy? And some people are happy that they killed him, some people are not. Didn't they kill a bad guy? I don't know. I thought that was what we're supposed to do. I don't know. I'm not getting into it with people, so don't send me messages, which you can on Mick Thomas Comedy. I'm expecting a political debate. I'm not looking for that. You're not going to get one out of me. It's the one thing I won't talk about is politics. Because you'll never change anybody's mind, so I don't get into it. So don't, don't, don't write back to me on that comment. I don't, I don't know. All I know is someone got killed. That, that peop, some people are happy about and some people are not. Right? Just imagine though we went to war with Iran and like there's not enough people enlisted and they, like some people are legit worried about a draft. You're not going to have a draft. What's wrong? Are you fucking, have you seen how fat most of the fucking kids are? You're not sending those people to war. Oh my God. It's going to be hot over in there. <laughs> And then they don't even have the right phone chargers. Their plugs are weird. <laughs> oh, fat fucks. They're not going to war with anybody. We have the softest people, the softest teenagers, uh, young adults. We're going to go, go into, go, just go to Brooklyn. Go into Brooklyn there. Drive around. Get all those hipsters. Get all those hipsters to go out and fight. Is that what you want in your corner? There's no fucking way you, you're better off without a draft. You just want a bunch of crazies and just send them over there. You don't want to draft any of these kids. You know, you want to send my kids. My kids are like, there's no Wi-Fi, right? <laughs> fucking, they don't know. They're not ready to go. No one's ready to go fight for their country like that. You can't, you can't have a draft in this country. It'll be hilarious though, right? You call them all in. Nah, you know, Fortnite, just like Fortnite. Just like Fortnite. Off you go up and you dress up like a fucking idiot and you just go shoot people. You're not going to have a draft. Stop it. Stop it. A whole war. Jesus Christ. It's weird though, man, isn't it? Like just in the last few months, what's after happening? Everyone's up in arms, right? Over the last few months, not even talking about the war thing, right? You got... You got Australia's fucking burning. Man, I, my heart breaks for those people over there. Heartbreaking. Like, isn't like 80% of a burning? Like, that, that's a statistic I'm getting wrong. I'm not making that one up. But like, holy shit, man, Australia's in trouble. Right? You see all the pictures of the animals? Like, fucking, the 23, or no, 20, no, this is what I did see. 28 plus million animals were just burned to death. That's heartbreaking, man. If that doesn't upset you, like, you know what I mean? That's a, that's, and I know, I think, I think Australia is one of the main planet, one of the main plants, one of the main countries that really is affected by global warming. Right? It's affected by it. It's absolutely affected by it. You can't, you can't, I don't, it's weird that people deny global warming. Right? That Greta, Greta Thunberg, what's her, Thorn, Thornberg, I don't know her name. Right? Person of the year is Greta. Look, I have no problem with that kid. That's a kid who just went out and said, I have a message and, 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 and they fucking put her in front of a camera and now everyone's attacking this poor girl. Everyone's attacking poor Greta because she had an opinion that the world is on fire. And it is. Australia, one of the holes in the ozone layer, apparently. I'm not talking out of my ass. It's kind of over Australia. And that's where the fires come from. She's not wrong. Person of the year. Person, of, that's a weird thing too, right? See, see, that's why when people, and people are getting so upset. So upset. Oh, is she person of the year? What about, what about the doctors and the Marines? That's why I don't go to award ceremonies. I don't watch them. They're all bullshit. They're all subjective. Every award, every award is, is every award ceremony is bullshit. Because it's, it, right? Because it's someone's opinion. Look, at if I'm lying down on the couch, if I'm lying on the couch and the remote control is too far away and I go to my son, hey, hey, grab me that remote control and he hands it to me, he's now person of the year in my book. I'm like, oh, I didn't have to get up. I didn't have to get up. You're, way, you're more of a help to me than Greta ever was. Thanks, son. Or if I'm sick and someone goes, you don't feel good? Hey, you, are you just lazy? Do you, want to, do you want me to go to Taco Bell? You are person of the year. 
You went to Taco Bell for me. That's it's subjective. That's all it is. That's all I'm saying. You are person of the year for getting me to remote control. Ah, oh, cheers, mate. Right? But man, you can't deny Australia. It's just, it's suffering, man. It's bad. The Amazon is gone. Do you know, do you know what I heard about the Amazon too? That there's eight, it's the equivalent of 8.4 million soccer fields just wiped out. I didn't make that up. That's a true fact. Given to me by Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> I follow Leo on Instagram, and he—that's uh, all he does. He goes after to help the planet, and I'm a big—I'm a big—I'm uh, a big advocate of that. I like—I like the planet because we live here. We live here, right? Billy Connolly used to do a joke years and years ago, back in the '80s, uh, maybe the early '90s, and I remember it just being hysterical. He was making fun of Bono, and Bono came out. He's like, we have to look after the planet because that's where we live. <laughs> Billy Connolly's like, oh, he's like, we never thought of that. Oh, fuck, he's right. We fucking live here. <laughs> it's a mess, man. It is a mess. Fuck, you got to feel bad for Australia. You got to feel bad for the Amazon. And you got to feel bad for the people who didn't get voted in, but Greta did. It's heartbreaking out there. But we'll do nothing, right? I don't know. I don't want to start off on, a, on this negative. It's 220. 2020. 220 sounds like a time, doesn't it? I don't want to start off negative like that. I had a great weekend, though. Staying on positive. I was down at Uncle Vinny's this weekend. Just passed. Crowd was gr- fucking two great crowds. Two phenomenal crowds. Had a fantastic time. Had a fantastic time. So thanks to everybody who came out to those shows. Really, really fun. They were really, really fun. I enjoyed it down there. I really did. Meeting people after the show. This one person came up after the show, right? This guy. And he comes up to see me every once in a while. And he comes up to me and he goes, uh, i got to ask you a question. And I go, what's that? He goes, did I... Did I see you in a, in a porno? I was like, what? I mean, I, got, I don't have that many TV credits to begin with. I'm just a solid stand-up. But I've never, I've never, <laughs> I've never been brought up on stage. You might see this guy. Uh, you've seen him. He uh, works all over the city. He's uh, one of our favorites here. You could have definitely seen him in a porno called uh, <laughs> Swallow My Shillelagh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mick Thomas. <laughs> he was like, no, I swear to God, I, could, I swear I could have swore you in a porno. In a porno. Isn't it just porn now? Don't you, don't you just call it porn? Not a porno. Por- short from pornographic material, by the way. Pornographic movie. No, I was never in one. What's wrong with you? You gonna put this pale guy in a in a in a movie like that? Huh? They're not even movies anymore, are they? Right? They're just like they're just they're just that you turn them on and they're just there. They're just things. People just starting, just just going at it. That's it. No story. Remember the stories. Remember there'd be stories. Right? People don't have attention spans for that anymore. Nobody has attention spans for these stories anymore. Right? You would put... Do you ever just sit on your phone? You just... You, uh, this is how bad we are now. Like if you happen to watch one, if you happen to just put one on and you see this gorgeous woman like who just walks out and she's like dancing in some big rich house in LA at 11 o'clock in the morning. Like, why are you dancing at 11 o'clock in the morning in heels and a, and a, and a, and a, and a luminous colored fucking thong? Right? Gorgeous woman comes out and you're like, you know what? I don't have, I'm, I'm, fuck this. I'm just going to forward past all of this. 20 minutes. Who has that? T- I don't have got time to watch 20 minutes. Fuck that. We won't watch a naked woman. We will not look at a naked girl who's phenomenal for 20 minutes. Like, that's how bad her attention span is. We've got 20 minutes. Fuck that. Let me just forward it all the way to the end. 
Remember when you were a kid, man, and, and like it was so funny. And if you, if you ever watched them as a kid, like it was just, it was just like your friend had one. It was his dad's, and I remember it. His name was uh, Martin Clear. Uh, Martin and Ian Clear were two really good friends of mine, and uh, they would. <laughs> You know, they, they ha- and it was during the summertime, right? And we'd all, we'd all like say, hey, I found this, this, this p- blue movie, we called them. They were called blue movies. I don't know what they call over here in America, but in Ireland they're called like blue movies or blues. I saw this blue the other night. Did you? Yeah. I saw this blue. And it was, just, it was just like one movie. That was it. You had one thing to choose from. That, that was it. And your, your, your friend had it, right? And it was like buried in the back somewhere in his bed, like just way behind all the towels and you had to crawl, crawl through this, which was seemed like a, ma- a mile long of towel. Like, you remember like Andy Dufresne in the Shawshank Redemption? Remember that? And Andy Dufresne, he crawled through a mile of shit just to get to his, came out squeaky clean on the other side. That's, that's what it was like. You would crawl through the towels and, you, and then you would, it would be hidden under and you found it. And it was a videotape. And you got the videotape and you sat down and you watched it with, with six or seven other men, men, boys. We were boys at the time. And we would all just like sit around and we would watch it. Right? Like, what, what are we doing here? Like, you don't, you don't watch a porn, porno with six or seven guys just sitting there with your arms folded. Like, oh, look at that. You'd borrow a cushion, like a little tiny, you know, I remember, like there was like six of us, but Martin's house only had, uh, only had like six cushions, out of six, you only had like four cushions, and you had to like grab a cushion to put it on your lap, just in case, because you didn't want your friends to make fun of you for having a, like a boner, like, yeah, like he's got a boner, well, yeah, you fucking idiot, look what's going on, you'd be mesmerized by what you saw, you'd never seen it before. And that was the tape, and you watched it for maybe, well, I don't know, they were maybe like three hours long. Right? And then, and it was funny, like you, you wrote down, someone had to write down the number of when, when it started because you would have to rewind it back to the exact same point where you got it. Remember that? You would rewind it back to the same point because you knew your dad. <laughs> like you knew your dad would know exactly where it was. Like, hey, hey! That's not why I left it. And even if your dad found that, he couldn't call you on it. He couldn't come in and go, hey, I was watching, you know, jerk off Jenny there. And uh, I noticed you, it wasn't where the part where you, where I left it off. He can't call you on it. But he knows. He knows that you know. And you know that he knows that you know, right? And he would just come in and just walk around. So what did you, what did you do today? Nah, nothing, nothing. Nothing at all. Just, uh, you know, hang out with the lads. Man, we used to, we used to, it was so fucking funny, man. Then you had to put the tape back exactly where you got it for fear of getting caught. Exactly where you, where you got it. And, then you, and all you do then was talk about it all day long. That's all you do was talk about it. And then the next day, the next day, then you would like, you would go back to the house and you would watch the same one again, maybe. And someone would sit by the window. Remember that? Someone would have to sit by the window and watch in case a car pulled up the, up the street. Right? You'd be like, all right, Keith, you're on watch. As soon as you see the car come up the street, you let us know. And then another person was sitting right by the fucking DVD, by the TV. And if he gave the signal, it was like, go, boom, eject. Straight upstairs, run. <laughs> you had it all. You had your escape plan all, all figured out. That was where it did. Now you just get it on your fucking phone. You get it on your phone. You turn on your phone sideways and you type in anything and it's there. Anything you want and it's there. There's no end to the weird shit you want to watch. Right? Here's the thing. Like when you, if you go on like now, like just go on to one of the main sites. Go on to one of the main sites and see what happens, right? It's all, it's a weird thing now is all stepbrothers and stepsisters. Isn't that the weird, like the weirdest thing? Stepbrothers, like we, we, when did that become like a top rated like story that the porn businesses go? It's like, all right, guys, what are, we, what, what are we selling now? Apparently they're into their step. All right, let's push all as much as that. Like Denise, you're going to be, uh, you're going to be his brother that, you know, or, or the mother, the stepmom. 
she's younger than the guy and she's married to his dad. We're supposed to believe that. Like you're supposed to believe what's going on. Like that's ah, not believable. But it's funny if you ever like as a guy, I don't know what it's like to watch as a woman, but if you ever watch it, like watch a porn like that, it's the greatest thing ever. But then when you're done, air quotes, watching it and it's still playing, you're just like, oh my God, what am I doing with my life? This is, oh my God, look, look at the lighting, that's terrible. She would never, never talk to him like that. That's bullshit. But why did, like, and before that it was MILFs. Remember that? MILFs came from uh, American Pie. And then there were like everything, like MILF does this with Guy and you would turn it on and the girl is like, 19 years old like yeah yeah technically you could have a kid but you didn't have a kid you're not a real milf stop it it's hysterical hysterical and every once in a while like the weird thing about these things is that when you watch them like you'll catch a mistake that they don't they never seem to edit out do you know what i mean like you'll catch a mistake where like she's all she's very vocal usually the girl says things she's very chatty because if not there's no dialogue there's only so much you can listen to. Oh, oh, ah, ah, e, e, right? Just like that. That's awesome, right? You know what I mean? High five. Like, there's only so much they can say. But usually, if you listen to it, like, the girl only just says what the guy is doing. Do you know what I mean? Like, they only say what the guy is doing. Like, yeah, that's that. And then they've all got like a, a porn accent. Do you ever sleep with a girl and she has a porn accent? Oh, uh, yeah, that's awesome. But, like, she doesn't sound like that. Like, she's, you know what I mean? When you talk to her, like, where do you want to go for dinner? I don't know. Applebee's sounds fine. And then, like, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, my God, that's awesome. Like, they've got that porn accent. And all they do is repeat what you're doing. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, put your hand right there. Yeah, you're putting your hand there. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, why are you still wearing your watch? That's it. Yeah, leave your watch on. Just, just your watch. Why do guys leave their watch on? Where are you going? Do you got to check the time? And some will leave their socks and shoes on. That's another weird one. That's another weird one too. You'll watch and they'll have, the, like a, they'll have a watch on, shoes and socks. Like sneakers and socks. That's it. Totally, totally bollock naked. Sneakers and socks. Like, what, what do you do? You have to take your shoes and socks off to take your pants off. And what did you do? Put them back on again? Oh, uh, sorry, baby. There might be glass around here. Could be glass. Oh my God, you're wearing your shells. Yeah, that's so hot. Like, that's all, they just repeat what's going on. But anyway, in one of the bloopers, like you'll ever, um, you might hear a blooper and she'll just say something wrong, right? Like, uh, let me think of an example. Like, she's like, she's like, yeah, that's it. Put your pussy in me. I'm like, what? You, you messed up the words in the direction of a cut, cut. Uh, Stacy, the word is put your, insert, I don't want to be dirty. Insert whatever word you want in there for penis. Not, not, because you, what well, doesn't make sense, Stacey, because you have a vagina or pussy, whatever you want to call it. You have one, so he would not put his in you because he doesn't have one. Oh, I got so high. Like, they don't call them on that. It's just so funny when you catch a blooper. It really is. I like them. I miss the stories, though. I do miss the stories. They were funny. They were funny. Now you get, like, like superhero stories, like they'll remake the Avengers, but it's, like, in a porn it's like, you know what? You're not going to save the world by doing that. I'm not, I'm not an expert. Just, that's when I become like, I turn into like, like a dad now. Like a dad watching wrestling. Ah, he's not really hitting him. They're like, yeah, you know what? That girl is supposed to be black. She, she's not, you know, the, the Avenger. You know, Thanos is getting away now and they're just wasting time. That's not how you stop a bomb. <laughs> A lot of amateur stuff out there too, right? A lot of amateur stuff. That's weird too. How would you do that? Like, I don't understand why you would put yourself out there like that. Here's the thing too. If you're doing amateur stuff, I get it, right? That's fine. Then you want to kind of build up a reputation. Not a reputation. We want to build up a following. But listen, do, do th- two things for me. Number one, if you're a couple and you're uploading this amateur stuff, good for you. I'm all about marketing yourself, getting out there. Do what you want. But listen, do me a favor. Clean up your room. your room. Your room's a mess. I can't watch that and all of a sudden see like a bowl, a bowl of Cheerios that you didn't finish on the, ca- on, the, on, the, on the dresser for three days. You shouldn't be eating cereal in your bedroom anyway. It's disgusting. The bedroom isn't for food. Right? 
or else, or else you get another one where they'll just uh, like and turn the TV down. That's not like turn the TV down. You're trying to do somewhat of a production here. Don't leave your TV on. There's nothing worse than you're trying to get into what they're doing, and all of a sudden you've got reruns of Roseanne playing in the background. Right? They're doing something like, I don't know, Dan. Right? That's my advice to you, if that's what you're going to do. Anyway, guys, that was the first podcast of 220. I appreciate you uh, tuning in and listening and subscribing and liking and sharing. You've been awesome to me so far. You really are have i hope i hope you continue to be just as awesome going forward in 2020 where am i going to be this week on january 10th and 9th i will be in mohegan sun mohegan sun in 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 wilkesbury pennsylvania so come on out there's still some tickets available uh for both shows but i would love to see you up there if you have any questions concerns uh comments you want to send send them my way guys send them to my instagram page because you know i respond Unless it's political, I'm not doing it. Send to me on Mick Thomas Comedy on Instagram and I will definitely get back to you. Guys, thank you so much for listening. Uh, Thanks for tuning in, liking, and subscribing. Happy 2020 for you, or 2020 for you. And uh, I will talk to you soon. Good luck to you. Good luck. It's the Mick Thomas Show. The Mick Thomas Podcast Show. What's that fucking noise?